Good morning. <laughs> Welcome to worship. Peace to you and blessings on this day. Last weekend at Grace was our Commitment Sunday, an opportunity to bring forth your estimates of giving for mission and ministry in the year ahead. And we welcome your commitments if you've not yet had a chance to support our shared life together. To look to the week ahead, we'll pause now for a moment as we look towards Veterans Day. I invite you to join me in prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, we give you thanks to the men and women who have served and defended our country and the values of freedom and justice we hold so dear. Help us be mindful of the sacrifices they made and the hardship endured by their families and friends so that we never take for granted the privileges they have secured for us. Hear us, we pray, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Today in our church year is All Saints Day, a day where we remember and give thanks for all of God's saints, remembering those who have gone before. And during our service, there'll be a time if you would like to come forward, you are welcome to do so. Maintain space amongst yourselves and receive a candle. You can light a candle and place it in the boxes here in remembrance of loved ones who have died. Peace to you in this remembrance. As we look to the week ahead, tomorrow is a food distribution truck across from Woodstock High School. If you are interested in volunteering, you can contact Mike Phillips. And if you know anyone who would like to show up to receive food in this time, uh, you are all welcome to do so as well. Next Sunday, November 14th, uh, is the time if you'd like to return either cash or food donations for the Woodstock Food Pantry as a part of our Thanksgiving food drive. You can return those bags and donations next Sunday. Our Sunday School meets next week at 10 a.m. Uh, with a lesson of stewards of food. And along the same thing, too, if you would like to bring forward items for the Thanksgiving display, the altar, some pumpkins or gourds, uh, those items can be brought back next Sunday, the 14th through the 21st as well. After worship today, if you would like to support Grace's Preschool, you can see Kim Lanham in the narthex, uh, part of the Heritage Candle Fundraiser for our preschool ministry. Blessings to you. Thank you for sharing in this time to worship God. I invite you now to stand as you are able. We share together in a litany of lament for all saints in the time of pandemic. The shroud of death covers us. 750,000 and more have died in our nation from the COVID-19 pandemic. Five million and more have died worldwide. Have mercy, O oh God. Sickness fills our homes and hospitals. Healthcare workers are weary and exhausted as suffering and death has come so near to them. Have mercy. Families and friends grieve. With Mary we cry out, Lord, if you had been here. Over 100,000 children in the United States cry out for parents, grandparents, or caregivers who have died from this pandemic. Have mercy. Ways of life are forever changed. The shadow of this disease spreads over the living. Relationships are strained or broken. Depression, anxiety, fear, and grief have become constant companions. Families and neighbors, leaders and officials mistrust one another. Anger rages. Systems break down. Doors are closed to understanding and mutual care. Have mercy, O oh God. Receive, O oh God, the laments of our own hearts.
lift up your heads and hear these words of promise. The creator of all brings life from the ashes. The redeemer of the world wipes away our tears. The spirit of life fills us with strength for the days to come. Even as we grieve, we do not grieve as those without hope. We trust that all your saints dwell with you forever, and so we are bold to acclaim. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess that we have sinned against you and against our neighbor. We have built walls instead of tables and have turned away the stranger. We have sought glory for ourselves and have treasured that which does not satisfy. Help us to love as you love, to welcome those you send, and to treasure mercy and justice. Turn us from our ways to your ways, and forgive us for those who need. Amen. God, who makes all things new, forgives your sins for Jesus' sake and remembers them no more. Lift up your heads and your hearts. Yours is the kingdom of God. Amen. In the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment, and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Word of God, word of life. Psalm 24 will be read responsively. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? They shall receive blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, 
that the King of Glory may come in. A reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them, they will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also he said this, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, See how he loved him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, Take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench, because he has been dead four days. Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth and his face wrapped in a cloth. Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Now can we hear? (laughs) Lordy. Okay. Come on, guys. Let's sit. How about if you sit right in here? Okay? Could you come right here and sit down on the floor? Thank you. Have a seat. Okay. Have any of you ever cried? Have you ever cried? Can you tell me something that you cried about? 
What did you cry about? Yes. I got hurt. Yeah, sometimes when we get hurt, right, we fall down, we've got to run in and get that Superman Band-Aid on, right? Yeah. Anything else? It, yes. Right, I know that there's so many times when we cry, right, when we get hurt. Now, have you ever been so sad that you just cried? Sometimes I cry when there's a movie on and there's a sad part, or maybe there's a sad story on the news. Yeah, sometimes we cry then too. Now, um, have you ever cried just because somebody else was crying and you felt really badly for them? Sometimes that happens too. Well, in our story today, the pastor just read, we read that Jesus cried. And in one of the versions of the Bible, it says Jesus wept. And wept is another word for cried. And it's actually the shortest verse in the Bible. Now, we just heard pastor read that in that he cried. Pastor cried, or pastor cried, that might be too. Um, but Jesus cried when he, maybe his friends were hurting. So Mary and Martha had, um, when Lazarus was very sick, and Mary and Martha were his sister and brother, or two sisters. And so they came to Jesus and they said, Jesus, you know, you have to come and help Lazarus. So Jesus went. But the problem was, by the time he got there, they were crying because Lazarus had died. Okay? And they thought that that was the end. But was it the end? No. Jesus was ready to do something else, wasn't he? So Jesus asked, there was a big stone. And back in the day, in front of a tomb, they'd have a big stone. And he asked for the stone to be moved away. So here you can see some men moving that big, big stone away. And then... After he talked to God, his father, he said in a really, really loud voice, Lazarus, come out. And Lazarus came out. And that's the way this artist is sort of depicting the way they would wrap bodies then, okay? They had a whole process that they went through when somebody died, and Lazarus came out. Thank you. And they took off the, the, um, the, those things that he had on, and he was able to walk away. So we all cry, and we're glad that we have a Savior who cries with us too. And he loves us so much that he hurts when we are hurting. He feels our pain. He sees our tears. Can we pray? Can you fold your hands and we'll pray? Dear Jesus, it is comforting to know that when we cry, you cry with us. But it is even more comforting to know that you have power over death. Last year for All Saints, I really wanted these candles. I wondered how we might safely prepare some version of candle lighting in remembrance of loved ones. All Saints was going to be our last parking lot worship service before worship leaders were going to move into the sanctuary for the unknown winter ahead. And I was rightly reminded of how difficult it was to keep one candle lit at a time outdoors for a baptism. So the potential impact of struggling to light a candle as a physical action to pair with one's grief, only to have it swiftly extinguished, we'd proceed without the candles for a year. But then on All Saints Sunday morning, if you're here, 
Perhaps you remember that day. I remember setting out a music stand and it blowing to the ground. And so then we put cement blocks on all the equipment outdoors. And as I heard that clanging noise where they all crashed to the ground with a strong gust of wind, I felt like the wind had been knocked out of me too. It was simply too windy. So even leading worship outside, where we could still see people, even that wasn't going to be. So much loss. So much at play to complicate our grieving. Today and All Saints Sunday, one year later, we have candles. And for the past year now, too, not only have we had worship service videos available to be accessible at home, but a year ago we started live streaming so that we could be worshiping at the same time and be connected in that way, even if in different places. And so for that and so many things, I'm so grateful. It is so good to be connected to God and to each other. I find that this year, as I've been anticipating All Saints Sunday, I'm still angry and sad and weary. I'm angry that the world is living through such trauma. I'm angry that the number of deaths from a year ago is so astonishing, and that a litany of lament prepared for worship is so quickly outdated. It's sad that all of our grieving is so complicated. Rituals are still upended. Our individual and collective grief is for so many people and for so many things. Death and loss and diminishing abilities to extend compassion and basic civility to one another because it seems everyone is so tired and seems to be over everything. It's all that and more on this day where we remember and give thanks to God for God's beloved children. So many people near and dear to our hearts. Saints of God who have died and are no longer here with us. I hear a bit of anger Despair and sadness in Mary and Martha. Their brother Lazarus had died. And why wasn't Jesus there? Couldn't he have done something? How can this be? Martha and Mary name their grief and pain as they speak to Jesus, their friend who knew them and loved them. He was greatly disturbed. In spirit, Jesus was deeply moved. Jesus was angry, and he wept. Jesus feels for them, for their pain and loss. And Jesus himself grieves as he weeps. In some sense, we could wonder Was this even necessary? What difference would it make if Jesus wept there with Mary and Martha? If he knew that he was facing his own death and how he would be resurrected. But it does matter. In this powerful moment, we see how Jesus willingly and knowingly enters into human suffering. Jesus knew where he was headed, who he was and what he would do, and he knew how painful this separation was for God's people. Jesus knew, and so he grieved with them. Like we heard in our children's sermon, 
For me, it's all of the people's tears that stand out to me in our scripture readings today. First, we heard this vision of a grand feast. Once God has swallowed up death forever, we hear the prophet Isaiah speaking of God who will wipe away all the tears from their faces. And then our second reading, too, from the book of Revelation, we hear about tears as well. The writer of this book, John of Patmos, was living in exile far away and writing words of encouragement to people in faith, saying, God will be with you. God will be with God's people. God will wipe every tear from your eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. From the prophet Isaiah, from the book of Revelation, Mary and Martha, all those who visited with them, and Jesus, they all weep at Lazarus' death. Tears upon tears upon tears. Anger and sadness, grieving and crying. It's the tears that stood out to me because it calls my attention to the ways that our bodies bear our grief. Perhaps you know too, the tears that fall gently, the weeping that involves your whole body, crying that renders you weak and yet cleansed enough for a tentative gasp or eventually a deep breath of air. I think I'm so moved to remember that Jesus wept as a reminder of how important it is to still feel. For on this All Saints Sunday, we hear that Jesus weeps and that Jesus' actions and words are still that of life. Jesus guides what seems like this rehearsal for his own death and resurrection to come. He says, take away the stone from the tomb. And when they knew only to expect the stench of death, Jesus reveals life. Lazarus come out. Jesus' actions and words are always that which give life. For it is in Christ that we receive abundant life, eternal life, living as people who have been unbound and set free. Unbind him. Let him go, Jesus says. When I find myself so angry at the pain of death and sad and grieving for people and loved ones who have died, I'm weary from the not yetness of our faith. And it's then that I remember there is a fullness of God's love not yet realized. I wish death had lost its sting right now. That instead of grieving for so many people, as we'll hear a bell toll, I wish it would feel like death had indeed been swallowed up forever. But that is still the promise of this day. That Jesus brings this eternal promise that death is not the end even as it hurts and stings, as grief rolls in in these unexpected ways that catch us off guard. As people of faith, we still hold on to the promise of Jesus' resurrection. The good news of Jesus is that it is more than okay for each of us to hold all of our grieving 
our anger and sadness and tears and hold it before God. And to look to that day where death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. Where we will be reunited with all those who have died. If it helps, recall some of the words we heard in our second reading today. A vision of the holy city, Jerusalem descending down to be with us. Heaven here on earth. Hear that bold proclamation that the home of God is among mortals. God dwells with us. We are at home with God. Dream a bit of what that'll look like while we give thanks. Give thanks to God for the people for whom we're trying to live without. And remember that God in Christ always has a way of making things new, of bringing forth life from death. I wish you great comfort and care today as we remember those who have died. May the God who wept with friends tend to us all in our grieving and pain and lead us to see joy and life even now as we wait for the not yet. May your tears be a part of God's healing. For God created us to be human beings capable of feeling. And Jesus wept while creating life. Dear friends, today and all days, God has set us free to live in newness of life. So we'll keep clinging to the promise of Jesus' resurrection. Amen.
through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made for us and our first sin. He came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm among the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. <clears throat> Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. We give thanks for the gift of baptism and rejoice with Leslin Denise Bartles, daughter of Kylan and Elise Bartles, the newly baptized. Hear us, O God. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvests and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O God. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O oh God. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress syndrome, anxiety, depression, addiction, coronavirus, and all who long for healing in any way, especially those we now name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Hear us, O God. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O oh God. God of the ages, we give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died and were laid to rest from grace in the past year. Chuck Sinkowski. Wayne Bell, Nancy Davis, Carol Raffle, Colleen Walsh, Carol Jarnicki, Elsie Stoddard, Vern Stenoyan, Jim White, Vanessa Bussey, Alice Wagner, Terry Craig, 
Michael Walsh, Floyd Rosenquist. Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O oh God. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always, through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.
The peace of Christ be with you always. We share a sign of Christ's peace. We give thanks for God's generosity and our giving in response to God's grace. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it. Yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine and strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of your saints, you show us the hope of your calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so with all the saints, with the choirs of angels and all the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to share, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done. body of Christ given for you, and the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. We pray. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned. In your love and care, nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, the beginning and the end, who has written your name in the book of life, bless you and keep you in grace and peace from this time forth and forevermore. Amen. For us, go in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.